Hello everyone, I'd like to start this video here to tell you everything you need to make my Halloween smoke bomb, which hopefully you've seen in a previous video. This is of course the deluxe version, that is full orange, pumpkin shaped, pumpkin colored, and makes a hell of a good blast of smoke. So here is what you need. Lovingly stacked out on my garbage table and in this area where I normally do my pumpkin mache. So here's what we need. You will need some sort of container to shake up any mixes you make. Some powdered sugar. A pot that nobody will ever care if you see it again. Maybe it owes somebody money. We don't know. All we know is nobody's going to be surprised if it vanishes. Some golf wax. Any kind of paraffin wax will work. But this is relatively cheap, easily findable in stores, and, well, it works pretty damn well, as hopefully you've seen. This is what the Gulf Flax looks like out of the box. It comes with four, or no, three of these little wafers inside. You're going to need some sort of casing. I recommend pyrotechnic firework half shells, or rather full shells when they come together, made out of cardboard. Now you don't have to use these, but I really recommend you do. You can be nuts and try to make your own out of paper mache, and then coat the inside with aluminum. But they're awful. Don't do it. It stinks. It takes forever. You can be more crazy. You can take wiffle balls and cut them in half, and coat the outside with black masking tape, and load the inside with uh, terracotta clay, and try that. That sucks too. Use these nice half shell pre-assembled, if you can get them, um, firework mortar shells. I get mine at canonfuse.com. It's where I get a lot of the materials. They fit nicely into that perfect shape. They're really easy to convert into these good smoke balls. They come in varying sizes. This is the three inch version versus the four inch version. A 3-inch will get you a little bit less smoke. I like the 4 myself. It gives you the perfect time and just enough of a huge volume to really make sure there's no issues. But if you're looking for a smaller amount of smoke, go with the smaller size. You're going to need a small electronic scale. This will be weighing out some chemicals. You can also use a triple beam balance, anything that gets you a reasonably accurate gram measurement. Some masking tape, nice wide bands. Hopefully you can see how this guy's got his tape wrapped around him. That's just this tape several times around. So some good wide masking tape. A lot of this stuff is also available at the dollar store. Don't waste your time with expensive stuff. You'll need a little bit of fireproofing spray. This I found at the dollar store. And it is a fabric and material fire retardant. The reason being that, obviously, there's a fire going on in here. That's what's making the smoke. You can see from the top there's all the burn marks, and this has been treated with the fire retardant. If you've got one that isn't treated with the fire retardant, well, I threw mine out because it was just a gigantic open burnt hole full of a smoking mess. It was disgusting, some flame started coming out, and flame is not what you want. You want smoke. So we need to use some fire retardant spray of some sort to fire treat this cardboard. Potassium nitrate! This is 10 pounds worth. Get it on eBay. There are a lot of good firework supply places out there that'll do it, but this will get you a relatively cheap supply and obviously a huge amount. I got this from a guy named Matt Materials on eBay. I believe it was about 32 bucks for 10 pounds. And, uh, well, I've gone through one 10-pound bag already, but don't be alarmed. And I think that's lastly, hopefully it is, you will need some Visco Fuse to set off your firework. There it is. Also available relatively cheaply at CanonFuse.com. That is Visco, V-I-S-C-O. There are other suppliers for it. Get it where you can. And that is your ignition system. All right, so we're gonna go into the first bit, which is priming your cardboard shells and fireproofing them. 
are here in my nice gloves. That's because the warning label on this stuff says it causes just about everything from bubonic plague to chronic rectal... Well, you get the idea. All right, but I'm being really careful using this in a relatively... relatively open area so the fumes don't kill me and I get as little exposure to this stuff as possible. There's no great secret to it. We're just going to get our cardboard tubes or cardboard half spheres as soaked with this stuff as we can on both sides and both halves of the tube. So now we have to get tricky with the camera. Bear with me. I'm a scientist not a director. Alright, so here are our half spheres and we are going to go a soaking. It does not take too long for this stuff to soak in. All you want to do is just give it a little bit of time, let it dry up, let it filter out, then flip your spheres over, soak the other side. You only need to do it once with any luck. Read the instructions on whatever fireproofing materials you use to get the best coating and best effect, but just make sure it's good and fireproofed. Hey, let's get a brand name on that. Yeah, dollar store, if you're lucky. All right. Okay, it's been about five, six minutes, so I'm just back out here to do the other side. Here we go. Get them decently soaked. Again, this is just a single application. Does a nice job. Make sure all areas get pretty well soaked. Close enough. All right, we're gonna let these suckers dry out. Probably give it to you another good half an hour, let them do that, and then you can start on the next step. Okay, it's time to make the actual powder component of some of the stuff that'll be smoking in here. This is where we're gonna use some powdered sugar, some potassium nitrate, our mixing container, and our nice little measurement. Now what we want here is a mix of 60% by weight potassium nitrate and 40% by weight of good old powdered sugar. You can use regular just off the bag cane sugar as well. I like the powder because it's at a smaller grain size. So here we go. Use our nice little digital scale, and we wait for it, there we go. We're going to load up 60 grams after we tear it and zero it, 60 grams of potassium nitrate. Do not kill yourself trying to get exactly 60 grams. 62, 65, 58, it's not going to make a huge difference to your end product. Do as I say, not as I do. Alright, about 60 grams worth. Goes into your mixing container. Oh, you need little cups. I should have said that. As an added challenge level, I'm going to be coming up with random things you also need in the middle of doing all this. If you survive, you are worthy to wield the smoke bomb. Alright, 40 grams powdered sugar. Close enough. 40.36, who the heck cares? Obviously scale up and down the measurements. If you're making a lot of bombs, you'll need more. This 100 gram batch should make about maybe one and a half bombs. Cover your mixing container. 
and give it a good old mix. Turn off your little scale so it doesn't go dead on you. This particular mixture is something that model rocketeers have been using for ages as a fuel source. And it's going to do the same thing for us. The sugar acts like a fuel, and the potassium nitrate acts as what is called an oxidizer. It provides oxygen to the burning mix as it decomposes. So there you go. If you want to make sure it works, just put a little bit into something that's not going to burst into flames. Stay a little bit back because it's going to burst into flames. And if it does that and you're still alive, then you've made it right. On to the next step. I'm going to... I'm going to put out the fire now. Yeah. Okay, now obviously before we get to making the complete setup, we've got to finish these fire-treated halves, or hemispheres. So we've got to get the holes for the smoke to come out the top. The fuse, you don't worry about at this stage. But we've got to get our smoke holes in place now. I've got here enough to make five complete bombs. Only the tops need the holes in them. So we're going to very carefully use a 3 inch drill bit and a drill. I know I said we needed a drill. Don't tell me I didn't mention a drill. We're going to use this to put our holes on in. I realize in this day where I could probably put this right through my hand and then try for some stupid reason to sue the Black & Decker company. Um, well, just don't. Watch out. Be careful. Don't put a drill through your hand. It's dumb. How many of you are betting now that one of these is going through my hand? your bets. And I win. All right. Six holes throughout the top. Clean them up with a hobby knife afterwards. Just get all this flash off. Again, only your tops need these holes. Oh dear, hobby knife. Yeah, you need one of those too. I know I said that before. So there we go. I will do the rest of these so you don't have to. But you're going to have to do your own. So enjoy. Okay, now we've got the holes cut in all of our tops. Now with the bombs, as hopefully you'll be able to see, these holes get sealed. Because inside the bomb we've got the smoke material as well as some priming powder to ensure that it goes off. So these holes cannot remain open. And now is the time we're going to close them up. Don't worry, it's not expensive to do at all. We just need some newspaper, a ruggedy old paintbrush, and some normal white glue which I know I said we needed at the beginning. And all we're going to do is take the holes, paint some glue around, and cover them up with some newspaper. So that from the outside, they should be pretty well sealed. One to try to keep moisture out as well as anything else that might get in. And 
and just paint around the hole. Take a little newspaper square. Press it on and over. Done. Move on to the next. There. All holes are sealed. Last thing you want to do is just grab your paintbrush and glue and just kind of paint around any edges and get it all down as firmly as you can. Glued solid, you can see how this piece is coming up. We're going to end up painting that down a little bit more. Glue should do a pretty phenomenal job of just keeping this down and keeping it sealed. Particularly if you've got to keep these fireworks stored for a long period of time. If too much water or anything gets in there, then you've got a useless firework. It's not going to go off at Halloween at the right time. And your actor is going to be standing there next to a fizzling ball with a whole bunch of trick-or-treaters not nearly as scared or frightened as they should be. Good. So I'm just painting around the edges, painting anywhere where the paper overlaps. I'm going to get one last dollop right down the middle. Good. Then we're going to let that dry, and that is ready to start the next phase, where it'll look a little bit more like one of these. Okay, time for the amazing headless guy who's telling you about make this stuff. The reason for the round bomb is not any great aesthetic choice. It's not so it looks more festive and is nice. It's for the sheer fact that if an actor is out there on Halloween night and needs to roll one of these guys across the pavement, all of our incendiary is packed into the bottom half of the bomb. That means all the weight's at the bottom. All the holes are at the top. No matter how this bomb rolls, it'll always come back to orient at the end of its roll, nice and straight up. Or on the floor. So that weight will always pull it in the right direction to get to the back, or to get back with the holes on top at the end of a roll. And that's the reason for this shape. You can bowl this bomb out, it'll roll across, and no matter where it lands, it'll roll back so the smoke's firing up. The only thing to watch out for is broken ground or areas where there's lots of grass that might pin the bomb, either on its side or somewhere where the smoke vents are not going to be facing up. Not only do you have it misfiring, but you've also got extremely, extremely hot smoke pouring out onto whatever surface. Most homeowners don't take too terribly kindly to having their lawn turned into a patch of flame. All right, it's time to cook the actual incendiary fuel. So let's see if we can get a closer slide over to the terrible kitchen nightmare. Here we've got our paraffin wax. This stuff has to be made liquid before we can add the rocket fuel mix of powdered sugar and potassium nitrate that we made earlier. So we grab the pot that no one will ever miss and drop in our stuff. This particular brick weighs approximately 120 grams. For every 40 grams that you have of paraffin wax, you need to add 100 grams of powder. So quick, do that in your head. 120 grams equals... Come on now. 300. So here's 300 grams of our powdered rocket fuel mix. Let's get this cooking.
Okay, the wax is just about melted. It's completely gone. What we want to do is take this off the heat once the wax is totally melted. And shut your heat off. Grab the spoon that you'll never have to use again. That should be perfectly safe right there. And we are just going to mix in our rocket fuel. And then just mix it around. You're going to come up with a goo that's kind of like thick mashed potatoes. If you keep it right on the heat, some of the sugar will start to caramelize and char at the bottom. So if you have the option, try to get a Teflon coated pot or pan so that doesn't happen. It's a heck of a lot easier to clean up when it's not a filthy, charred up, brownish, crusty mess. So here's our mashed potato consistency rocket fuel paste. And now all we do is fill up our half spheres most of the way. Don't want to take it quite to the top, but make it mostly level. And for our final step, just make yourself a little divot right in the center. That's where the fuse and a little bit of ignition powder is going to go. Then you can take this thing, make sure it's pretty spherical. Some of these things have a tendency to want to bend up in the shipping process. But right now, just make sure that's a good, solid, complete sphere all the way around. It's not oblong any way or the other. You can throw this right in the freezer to harden up. And whatever's left will begin the makings of a third bomb, at least for this batch. Obviously, you can make your recipe at any size. Just remember the total recipe for the stuff is 60 grams potassium nitrate, 40 grams sugar, 40 grams wax. And this one will just need a little more dumped in on it on the next run. Okay, now it's time to assemble all of your finished components. We've got our top hemispheres with our holes in them, which are covered by newspaper glued down with PVA glue. We've got our lower hemispheres filled with our combusted mix, all nice and hardened from their stay in the freezer with a small divot to plop the fuse in and add some priming powder. At this point, we're going to need some more priming powder. This is the exact same rocket fuel mix we used before. 60% potassium nitrate and 40% sugar. We're also going to need some fuse. Again, this is Visco Fireworks Fuse. Relatively easily obtainable from Fireworks Shop. This was purchased from CanonFuse.com. Okay. This pyrotechnic mix inside will light by itself, but it helps to give it a kick to get the entire surface burning as quickly as possible to emit that massive quantity of smoke very fast. So what we're going to do is put a little priming charge in here of that rocket fuel mix. Grab a spoon you plan on using only for pyrotechnic purposes. And let's add a bit. You want to make sure you get it down in that divot. If any of you are anal retentive about uh, amounts, about one and a half tablespoons should do just fine. The other function this has is when this top bit goes up, this is going to burn out the holes along with the pressure and cause it to be able to escape our hemisphere. So here's a quick zoom in of what we're after. Okay, just gonna do it to this other one. 
as fortunately we have two pre-made and right with us here. And again. Now we've got to get some fuse. The fuse you've got has got to be enough to go into that pit and come out the top of the top hemisphere. And all you need to do to measure that, just put them together. And give yourself maybe two inches of fuse out the top. If it's too long, who cares? Cut it down and burn the rest off for fun. Use your first fuse to make a uniform length for the second. These are probably a little bit too long, but you can't hurt being safe. Now what we're going to do is make a fuse hole with a hobby knife right in the top. Going to give it a little twist. From both sides. And we're going to check to see if that's enough to get our fuse through. No problem at all. We're going to make sure our fuse is nice and straightened out. So it's not at a curve. We're going to put our fuse right on through. We're going to find that divot. Make sure the fuse goes into it. And then just clamp them off. And try to orient the halves. So they're about as close together as we can possibly get them. Time to seal it up. Grab a little bit of thin masking tape. Don't bother trying to use hot glue for this stage. These will get so hot they will melt through hot glue and come apart. If they come apart, then all the combustible material inside is going to be exposed to the atmospheric oxygen. And rather than smoke, it's going to burst into flames. If you're doing this for Halloween, the prospect of dry leaves all over the place and fire should be enough to chill you, considering this should be going on probably in your own neighborhood. This first layer of tape is just to hold this in place. It'll also seal the gap between the two so none of our ignition powder can escape. So in further steps, we won't have to worry about any kind of leaking. There. Now the bomb's sealed up, at least initially, all the way around. If I ever find a better means of sealing this, I will let you know. Now we grab our much larger masking tape and go around many, many times. If you're OCD, let's say... 15 times. You can go as few as six. Depending on the quality of your tape. I like to go around about 10 times. If the contents on the inside manage to burn their way out, you're looking at a flame hazard. So this has to be a really, really decent good seal well thickened. At some point I'm going to experiment with trying to seal it up with paper clay, but I don't know how well that'll work. And again, I'll let you know when I find out. Alright, that's not going anywhere. Tear it off, grab something roundish, and just squash that tape down. You can do it by hand, but you'll leave a whole bunch of little gaps. It's best to get something metal or a pair of pliers. Or even the rim of a knife. And just flatten these sticking out edges down.
Yeah. And realistically, flattening them is mostly to aid in the painting process, so they look a little bit more spherical and they're easier to handle. All right, last thing you do is grab the hot glue gun that I know I told you you needed at the very beginning. Make sure that's good and down. And just put a little sealing layer of hot glue right around the fuse. It's not going to hurt the fuse at all. And what this will do is one, help keep any extra moisture out, and two, make sure that we can turn this thing any which way and none of that internal ignition powder is coming out. This bomb is ready to go. I could take this outside right now, light it, and you get the same firework effect you got in the earlier video. For the next stuff is just painting and finishing. So there we go. I'm going to finish this other one here in quick motion, just so you can see again what it's like. And there we go. The other great thing about using all the materials is this device, because it's masking tape, cardboard, newspaper, sugar, wax. If you forget one of these and leave them out after a couple rainstorms and maybe a lawnmower pass, they're gone. Totally recycled. If you do it out of plastic or use any other components, maybe duct tape on this, it's going to leave behind some gunk that neighbors are going to complain about. It's going to be garbage all over the place. But everything here is fairly biodegradable if it ever gets caught out or you forget it or anything terrible like that happens. But once more also, the other perk of having them be orange is that you can collect them relatively easily the day after Halloween. Alright, so there they are. They're ready to fire and the only thing left to do is to finish them up and that will be our next and final phase. Alright, it's time for painting. And for painting these guys orange, I'm using the cheapest paint I could possibly get at Walmart. You really don't need to be fancy. These things are going up in smoke. But one thing it is important to do when you're painting is to protect the fuse. Easily accomplished. Strip of masking tape. Attach to the fuse. And fold over. Not too tightly so you can get it back off, but what you're looking to do is simply protect the fuse so it's not getting blasted with spray paint. Spray paint may sink in and damage the black powder in the fuse and cause it to not light. We're going to head out to the painting box now and give these guys a go. Okay, it's painting time. We're out at the painting box. I have the two bombs in place, and what we've got here is a good idea to do. Put your bombs up on something round can be a toilet paper holder, an old masking tape roll, something just to get them up so you can get a better spray at all angles and leave a minimum part out and uncovered. Helps reduce the amount of time it takes to spray one of these things rather than spray and dry and rotate and spray and dry and rotate. This just gets you a better coverage area. So there we go. Now you'll notice the covering on this one bomb is not too terribly even. You pick up a lot of orange on the masking tape and not so much on some of the cardboard. This can be avoided by giving the bomb a quick paint of white. If you've got an acrylic paint that's only like 50 cents uh, from Walmart, you can just give it a quick paint over. Or you can take a spray and give it a layer of white first. I'm going to try that on this other bomb. It 
should be noted that white is quite a bit more fumey than the orange. I'll finish this up and show you guys the end result. And hopefully at the end of the last stage is just to take a sharpie and draw on your pumpkin. And then you'll have a finished smoke bomb ready for Halloween. So I have the final two bombs right here, all painted and fully primed. This is the one that I did not hit with a layer of white primer first. And this is the one that I did. I am willing to bet that the camera is not going to pick up any difference between these two. The only true difference is that this one took one hit of paint to get this color, and this one took maybe two and some careful touching up here and there. So here is pretty much your final bomb. The only thing to do now is peel off your protective layer, keeping the fuse safe. And then have some fun. Grabbing our handy Sharpie, just draw some pumpkin lines. And a quick face. And there's a finished bomb, all ready to go and ready to scare people on Halloween. Here's a comparison of the one that I had pre-made. Don't need to go crazy with the faces, as on Halloween night they're just going to be there for a few moments. Nobody's going to see them or look that closely. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope to have a few more out pretty soon. Enjoy your Halloween.